We're often asked about tips with regard to full-time RV living. We're asked this online and in person, quite often actually. And so Susan and I got to talking and we thought we'd try to figure out, you know, what are, what are some of our favorite tips? And we came up with five of them. I'm sure there's a lot more, but we're going to share five of them in this video. And hopefully there are some that will be useful, whether you're just starting out in your full-time RV living or if you've been doing it for years. So we've certainly learned to be more flexible with regard to our travel. It seemed like before we got into RVing, everything was kind of, uh, you know, when we, when we had time off from work or, you know, we were in vacation mode. And that kind of stayed with us just a little bit in our approach when we first got going. An example would be, we were on our way up the Oregon coast and we were nearing about halfway and it was about time for us to cut inland quite a bit because we were going to stay up around um, Mount Hood and we had reservations um, that we had booked well in advance there for what about a month. Uh -huh. And so I was just sitting there thinking, wow, we're, we're going up the Oregon coast and we're, we're filming it and we're going to stop in the middle of the Oregon coast and, and head out. And, you know, it was, you know, troubling me just a little bit. I mean, I was, I was just kind of mulling it over in my mind, but it, the thought dawned on me, I don't have to go <laughs> up there. No. You know, I was well within the time to um, get rid of the, the reservations, to cancel them uh, according to their guidelines. So we decided, let's just cancel them and continue <laughs> up the Oregon coast. And we made a video about that and we had just a wonderful time. So yeah. we learned to be, you know, very flexible about that, that sort of thing. Yeah, and another reason that you want to stay flexible in your travel plans is because of reservations. If you are planning to stay someplace maybe a month so that you can take advantage of their monthly lower rate, uh, you'll probably want to book that well in advance because those monthly sites fill up quickly. Um, also, if you're planning to visit state and national parks, those often are booked a nine yep. months up to a year in advance, especially on the weekends. So just be sure that you're flexible in your reservation schedule and your, you know, sometimes it's, it's you know, you think that you're going to just go out and just uh, kind of go where the wind takes you. And that may be fine if you plan to do a lot of, um, a lot of boondocking mm -hmm. or you know, staying on BLM land, but if you're planning to be places that make reservations, you're probably going to have to to be flexible and maybe change a reservation or change a destination based on availability at those places. So. Yeah, and I can remember when we went to Crater Lake, which you also <laughs> did a video on that, um, we got there at a time when there was, I don't, I don't know, severe winds <laughs> yeah. uh, and, and very, very cold and, and snowing and sleeting. And so we decided to um, extend our stay where we were at and kind of wait it out. So we were a little bit more flexible. This might not have been able to happen uh, back in our vacationing days, but mm -hmm. it was, you know, so we're just kind of allowing ourselves a little bit more freedom, I guess. Um, you know, we're not so rigid that we make, uh, you know, plans so, uh, much in concrete that we can't change them but then you do have to have some plans if you want to go certain places you want to make sure that you can get in and, and get reservations yeah that's true and another thing to remember is that if you're living full-time in your RV that RV is your home and we kind of thought at first that if we had lived in an RV that all of our travel had to include the RV yeah. And that's not yeah. necessarily the case. If you live yeah. in a house or apartment, you will take a road trip or right. take a plane somewhere or something. And the same is true if you're living in an RV. Yeah, the thinking was going through our minds like, wow, we're paying for this space that we're at right now. Why would we jump on a plane and fly somewhere? <laughs> But in, in all actuality, you're probably paying, you know, rent or a mortgage uh, somewhere if you're not in an RV and you fly and go on vacations while you're still paying those, those expenses. So, um, it, you know, just allow yourself the flexibility to think, uh, you know, outside the RV. Uh, yeah. And yeah. like, for example, <laughs> let's say you want to fly uh, to California if you're on the East Coast or fly to Florida if you're on the West Coast. 
and you're really thinking, or, or let's say you want to travel in the RV uh, <laughs> from there to there, and the only thing um, that you might have uh, lined up is a big ball of yarn, the largest ball of yarn. <laughs> if that's the only thing that you've got going on between there and you know point A and point B, you might want to consider just flying and, and going and enjoying that area. In other words, you know, why, why spend all that, that money and expense and everything if, if you don't have a lot of things along the way that you want to do? Yeah, we've um, compared, you know, if you just want to go for a weekend someplace, you know, figure out what the, um, the costs are actually going to be. Because if you're, if you're pulling or driving your RV, your fuel costs are going to be probably double of what they are if you're just taking your vehicle. So if you add that and what you're going to pay for a campground or RV park, it may actually be cheaper to just take your vehicle and stay in a hotel if you're only going to be gone for a day or two. And then you, you don't have that extra burden yeah. of you know unhooking and hooking and, and always taking your RV. Just because you have an RV, you don't have to limit your travel to taking your right. RV all the time. So. Yeah, so we basically mm -hmm. learn to give ourselves more more freedom. I mean, it seems like it would come with the territory, but you know, it might not be these things, but it might be other things that you might need to get your mind thinking a little bit more uh, in flexible terms. So we've, we've learned to be flexible. Another tip that we've talked to a lot of RVers about is um, drive times when you're traveling. There's kind of a, a rule of thumb out there that a lot of people try to go by which is 300 miles or 3 o'clock whichever comes first yeah. and we definitely try to shoot for that 3 o'clock um, yeah, for it's... stopping for the night when we're traveling for sure yeah and this um, I can remember times when we would drive from all the way in the south of the United States all the way to the north and just do an overnight or something like that or we'd really be pushing and we know people now that are in RVs that come from coast to coast and they just blaze right through everything and that's perfectly fine there's there's nothing wrong with that as long as it's fitting their um, uh, objectives and, and everything's going well for them but for us we have we have several reasons why we like to stop about three o'clock in the afternoon and again this yeah. isn't in concrete we're flexible yeah. about it but this is this is just something that we've decided that works best for us because of a lot of yeah. reasons we like to arrive in the daylight so that if we are hooking up or you know unhooking the truck we can do it in the daylight that's much better um, also, we like to be able to explore the area. We have our Fitbits. We'll want to go for a walk. Um, for both of us, just sitting in the truck and also for Barkley, being in the truck longer than um, four, five, six hours just really gets taxing. Yes. It's, um, you know, when you're driving, you're either driving a, a, an RV or pulling an RV. Um, that type of driving is extremely stressful. Um, you, you've got everything that you own and that you live in behind you and you may not realize it until you stop. Bernie will often say this, he, he won't realize until he stops and kind of gets out of the truck how tense he was because there's just, there's so much writing, uh, you know, on you're driving and you're having yeah. to pay attention to other people so and a lot um, of it is those other people yeah, that are making me that tense are making it's not so really much tense what's and going on in our rig, and, but. and you know if I'm stressed out trying to navigate to make sure that we you know make the right turns or whatever if you're in an RV you're probably not going to be able to quickly make a u-turn or turn around you yep. may end up going several miles out of your way if you make a wrong turn so um, driving when you're driving your entire house is much more stressful so you know not driving for long periods of time is is really helpful um, yeah, for us. Yeah it allows and, us know, to it, relax yeah, when we get to a place. Yeah it allows us to kind of unwind and we got the daylight. Yeah. <laughs> we, we like the daylight because we can see the place that we're actually I don't, I don't care if you're pulling off into uh, the, the dirt in the desert or the wilderness or, or an RV park or campground it's nice to be able to see what it looks like especially if it's just a, a an overnight stop you know you might want to check it out and that's become a, a lot of the adventure for us that we can get someplace 
and make that part of the experience. Mm -hmm. You know, we will explore, we'll go around, even just checking out the local stores or restaurants or whatever. And like Susan said, we'll hike or walk mm -hmm. uh, the area. And, you know, we pulled into a lot of places at night and yeah. when it's pouring down rain <laughs> yeah. and a place that we've never mm -hmm. pulled into before. And, you know, it, it, it's always worked out okay, but it, it's definitely not what we would, would prefer. prefer. <laughs> yes, for sure. <laughs> Yeah, so it's definitely uh, a good thing to, to, to stop so that you, you can enjoy it. But everybody's got uh, different uh, goals and objectives. But for us, that's one, a big tip for us is to... To try to stop by 3 o'clock, for sure. Another tip that comes up quite often is something I call fuel up before I hook up. And that's primarily for uh, a couple reasons. Um, if, if I can fuel up with the truck before it's hooked up to a 40 foot fifth wheel, that just uh, go, it, it's just easier. Yeah. I, I can pull into a place, get fuel wherever I want that has diesel fuel and then uh, hook up. So that's a really big uh, tip for us. And another reason why I like the uh, fuel up uh, before I hook up is that I'm kind of the person, I guess I've always been this way, whether I've been in an <laughs> RV or not. Once we've done all the planning and we went through everything and we're, we're all loaded up and we're ready to take off, I just don't like getting off at the first exit we see, you know, immediately to, to use the restroom or to, to get fuel and stuff like that. So I, I, I kind of feel like once I've um, um, started going down the road that I want to keep going for a while. Yeah. And, and so that kind of comes back to my preparedness, you know, let's use the restroom before we leave, let's fuel up before we leave, you know, all these kinds of things. So, and fuel up before we hook up has definitely uh, helped us numerous times and we've been able to do it more often than we thought we yeah. would. Yeah, it's definitely less stressful. Trying to, you know, locate a fuel station that's going to accommodate a 40 foot fifth wheel just getting in and getting out and depending on the traffic or you know how busy it is you never know um, can be really really stressful for for us anyway uh, some people are you know seem very comfortable with it but it's something that causes a lot of stress for us so being able to fill up with just the truck is much easier we can also choose uh, our gas or fuel stations um, much easier we can yeah, go definitely. where the cost is lower because we don't have to worry about being able to get in or out of it yeah. so that's definitely and because we're within the the amount of fuel that we have by stopping, by stopping. early <laughs> in the afternoon like we like to we we usually have the luxury of being able to fuel up before we hook up now there are longer sections that we've done certainly where We've had to fuel up on the road and we usually opt for the, the uh, truck stops or mm -hmm. things like that that can accommodate the vehicles very easily. There are some that we see, um, you know, smaller RVs and stuff pulling into. And, you know, most of the gas stations, the fuel stations that we've come across in the travels um, on, uh, on highway have been able to mm -hmm. uh, accommodate us, but they might not be something that we want to pull off yeah. into a town, off the highway f further and go through side streets and everything like that getting there. So um, definitely fuel up before we hook up has worked for us. Yeah. Another tip that works really well for us when we're traveling and just looking for a place to park for overnight is to try to stay in casino parking lots rather than store parking lots. Casinos have a lot of um, benefits for uh, overnight stops for RVers. A lot of times they have, you know, special designated areas of the parking lot. Um, we've been to some that offer free water and dump stations, uh, pet walking areas. Uh, they'll always have some kind of restaurant option. Security. A lot of them, yeah, they have security. They're well lit. Um, the, a lot of them will have a fuel station right there and so they that's been a really good option for us when we're traveling and just looking for an overnight stopping point is to try to find casinos. Yeah and if you have to stay in a store parking lot or something <laughs> like that there's there's I, I suppose nothing wrong with that provided they they allow it 
it's just not our pick. Yeah. You know, it's it's not something that we uh, dreamed of when we uh, started out on this, um, nor our casinos for that matter. Yeah. But they just happen to have. Uh, first of all, they're welcoming mm -hmm. uh, our beers there. Mm -hmm. They they want you there, and for obvious reasons, they want you to spend money. We get that, but um, we are we're not much into gambling or anything <laughs> like that. We. Uh, basically use the uh, amenities and and typically it's only for an overnight we're yeah. just passing through now one store lot that we have stayed in is like a Cabela's lot they they had a lot of services there as as well but mostly we're not looking to pull off into towns and, and to stay at uh, department stores and things <laughs> like this it's just I, yeah. I usually don't even like parking there with my car <laughs> let alone my yeah, RV. Yeah they're, they're, uh, they're usually really busy and you know, even though they allow RV parking, they may not actually, a lot of them have the space to get in and out of very easily. So just because it's allowed may not indicate that it's it's a good option. But a lot of the casinos have really large parking areas specifically for the RVs. And another advantage is that when you stay there, usually all you have to do to stay for anywhere from three to five, sometimes even more days, is to um, sign up for their little um, reward card and that will usually get you a discount on food or it might get you some free play at the casino and we've definitely yep. taken advantage of that we've yes. gotten anywhere from five up to twenty dollars a piece of free play and turned that into some cash, <laughs> to, uh, for, some our cash travel. for travel so they actually and paid us to stay there yeah so it works out really well in that and, a, and another um, advantage is that you know they have no problem with you putting out your slides and hooking your truck if you have a fifth wheel, if you have a generator, they they'll have yeah. hours you can run a generator. It'll vary which is, from place you know, to place. It, but yeah, but obviously for the most it varies, part. but that's probably something that you're not going to do in a store parking lot. Or shouldn't um, do. <laughs> or shouldn't do. Yeah. So uh, casinos really have a lot of advantages, and then also if they have a paid RV park, oftentimes those RV parks are much less expensive than another park. We went to one that we really uh, enjoyed in Laughlin, Nevada, the Avi Casino. And they have a KOA right across the street on their property. And it's probably half the price of any other KOAs that I've ever seen. And you get to use the, uh, the really nice pool that the casino has. They have a private beach. So um, even if you're staying in, you know, want hookups and are yeah. staying in the paid RV lot, those are often much uh, less expensive options for for overnight stays or for a couple of days yeah there's definitely a lot of benefits uh, with this so we've been doing it for a while and we like it and we've also did a video on uh -huh. this i believe where we covered yeah. some tips with that so yeah, check so that out too that's definitely one of our favorite rving tips yeah. Okay, and last but not least, or maybe it is the least, <laughs> it has to do with uh, cleaning the black tank. I've got what I feel is, is a good tip uh, for cleaning the black tank. And by the way, before I forget, we actually did a video one time uh, where Susan uh, cleaned the black tank. You yeah. might want to check that out. Um, what I've learned about cleaning the black tank um, as most people know the sensors don't work and things like that and, and after a while you just don't even pay attention to them anyway because you got a feel for how much water you're using the battery that you have left and and all those types of things and how full the, the tanks are you, you pretty much um, there's there's signals <laughs> there's other signals so but anyway uh, in cleaning the black tank I did some experimenting now um, this is going to vary whether if, if you're traveling a, a lot and moving around a lot uh, that's going to help um, in the black tank it's going to move things around and, and keep it uh, looser in there um, but I okay let's start with like travelers uh, vacationers they get an RV typically they're going to um, do their thing and then pull into some place and pull the, the things and, and let it go and they're probably not going to do much about cleaning it the typical uh, people there there are obviously some of you out there that vacation and do a good job at cleaning it especially if it's your rig yeah all right and then you have uh, people who are more uh, nomadic that might be traveling almost constantly and they're going to uh, be emptying their 
tank quite a bit they're probably going to be using these dump stations where you go in and there's probably people behind you so mm -hmm. you can't do anything elaborate <laughs> but they're going to be very good at when they do get to uh, a campground or someplace they're going to spend a little bit more time uh, back flushing and cleaning their their tank so this isn't pointing <laughs> fingers at anybody i just want to give you a personal experience <laughs> that we've had now we had um maybe not been moving around as much maybe just uh, every week or so and everything and then i would get to the point where it was time to um, really uh, clean out the tank so what i would do is i would go ahead and um, pull the uh, the black to uh, empty it and then i would continually refill the tank with water i've done this up to the point where i filled the tank 10 times released all that of course it had been clear looking in the uh in the elbow have a clear elbow and it would choke uh, what what appears to be clear water so you think that you know it's doing a pretty good job and then i went ahead and thought well i'm going to get one of these wand things so have one of those wands that has the flexible uh cable that can get down some some toilets go straight down some go down in a slant well i got the flexible one so it would work either way I've stuck that down there and let that thing rip around in there with high pressure water um, did all that okay and still have good clear water running out so then i thought you know i'm gonna try something because when i fill the toilet with water and then let it go there's not a lot of force um, that way it doesn't seem like yeah. there's not a, a lot behind it so um and I, I noticed that you know it would be clean after using the wand so what we what we had started doing is pouring buckets of water down if you get at least a three gallon bucket you know five gallons even better if you can carry it and yeah. maneuver with that easy enough and when I would go outside and sit after doing all of this after using the wand after filling the the tank several times like that I would have Susan stand inside at the toilet and she would pour the buckets of water down the toilet from several feet in the in the air without creating any splash but just you know getting that just that force of all that water going down the toilet and i would notice particulate matter starting to come through the the uh, clear uh, uh, elbow i could see the the water turn color and begin to loosen debris so this is a tip that we do all the time yeah. now we use several buckets of water uh, it, probably about five of them yeah. sometime now we're, we're not going to do this every single you know other day or yeah. every week even I, I think it's probably i think the most that we've done it is every two weeks yeah and then uh, certainly after a month we're going to use that that method even though we've been doing all the other back flushing and all that kind of stuff and we have had the hose on and running it through and back flushing that way and using the internal flush system which you know I, I, I I'll tell you I've, I've talked to a lot of people that have tried this on different types of rigs and put the buckets down and they get similar results it really helps a lot your mm. mileage may vary it might not work for you but this is certainly yeah, a tip that we've learned when yeah, it comes to cleaning just, the uh, having tank. that that pressure of you just pour it down as fast as you can without spilling it to try to get as much pressure behind it as you can and it really makes a big difference yeah, there's definitely a lot more force so uh, pouring buckets uh, down the, uh, the toilet buckets of water is definitely a tip that we've come to appreciate so that was just five of the many RVing tips that have really helped us out yeah and if you've got some tips put them in the comments below or if you just have a comment on something that we've shared in this video put it there too and don't forget to share and subscribe Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Okay, so the reservation's all set. Yeah, be there soon. No, no. I just want the pedicure. Yeah, okay. All right, thank you.